what's up everybody so we're actually outside the shop today uh, and I'll get into why here in just a minute but we are going to be shaping the handle scales that we mounted onto this knife right here now I wanted to let y'all know something so whenever I had y'all come up with the name for this and I said I was gonna do the random comment generator I'm gonna be doing that on tomorrow's daily vlog whenever we actually you know put the edge on this do the cut and test and all that that's when I'm gonna release the name that we are going with so what we're gonna do today again we're gonna just focus on getting these shaped and we're actually gonna be doing it on some 1x30s so these two guys right here we're gonna be using those to actually shape the handle scales so y'all could definitely do this if y'all have one of these two tools right here these are just 1x30s and all we're gonna be working with is 80 grit belts that's it same belt on both little 1x30s but let's get to shaping this I'll break it down tell you why I'm doing things that I'm doing and we'll get it done so let's jump into it so what we're gonna start off with is grinding the handle scale material back to the spine and belly of the tang itself get rid of that excess epoxy and handle scale material and get it back to the metal and the big reason why we're doing this outside is again this stuff is very very messy whenever you're grinding it and I did not want to deal with having that all over my shop even with my vacuum going it still did not even phase the amount of just stuff that comes off of this and gets everywhere now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put a 45 degree angle all the way around the handle scales so that we can start getting a generalized shape and the whole point behind this is once we get the 45 all the way around it I'll be able to put it in my hand and actually start getting an idea of what the, the next bit of shaping needs to be how are we gonna start contouring this So this is me actually putting it in my hand seeing where it's sitting and where I need to start doing those contours and what I decided was doing contours towards the front of the handle scales and contouring a little bit on the back of the handle scales. And what I'm doing is I'm following the lines of the shape of the tang itself and making sure that I'm not throwing anything out of whack. I want it all to flow well. I want it all to make sense. And I'm taking my time and just removing a little bit of material at a time whenever we're doing this the reason why you need to take your time for one is because this 80 grit belt on this 1x30 will remove material faster than a 40 grit on my 2x72 because of how fast it's going you can't slow the speed of this it's just flying what I'm doing right here is tapering the scales around the lanyard hole so that whenever you do put a lanyard on it, it doesn't stick out wider than the handle scales themselves. Now what we're doing is we're just slowly kind of rounding off the edges and getting it ready for the next step, which we're gonna be doing on the other 1x30. So now we have it rounded a little bit, it's rough shaped, kind of where we want it, that way we have the contours right, but now we're going to take this with the slack belt and we're going to go ahead and really get that shape refined. And the reason why we're using a slack belt right here is so we don't have any hard edges cutting into the handle scales, it'll actually give a little bit and let us just kind of round things over and shape things to where they're really smooth and again this is another 80 grit belt that's what I had on both of them and this is where we're taking our time and we're really refining the shape of the handle scales getting into the contours making sure that things are smoother so that whenever we have to do the next steps we're not having to work as hard And I can't stress enough, take your time whenever you're doing this because you cannot put material back on, you can only take it away. This is how much dust we had everywhere. 
I mean, this, all of this would have ended up just being in my shop if I would have done it all in there. And that was just cleaning one machine. As you can see here, there is still a ton of grinding lines from that 1x30 that we need to smooth out. And this oscillating spindle sander, also known as a drum sander, is pretty much just like a small wool attachment on a 2x72. I've said that in previous videos. But it puts in work. I mean, it really gets in there and gets this smoothed out really fast. And I, I really like working with this because a lot of small wool attachments, people only focus on one section of the belt. And this lets you utilize almost the whole drum because it goes up and down and spins. Uh, we have a lot of grind lines in the spine of the knife. And we're going to use this larger drum to go ahead and get those out. And that was just a couple of passes, and that's how much work it did that fast. We're gonna go ahead, focus on it, get a little bit more done. Um, I did use 80 grit drums for these ones that you're seeing right here, plus I went all the way up to a 320 grit drums and was able to get a lot of the scratches out and put a good finish on it. But I can't stress enough about having a few simple tools to be able to do things like this right here. An oscillating spindle sander does not cost much. 1x30s do not cost much. I'll talk about them later in the video, but I mean, you can't beat these tools. It's just simple stuff that you can get from Harbor Freight that can make your life so easy because you have people trying to use files and rasps and do all of this by hand. I mean, why do that whenever you could spend 60 bucks and get something like this? Now we're going to get inside that finger choil with the smaller drum and really refine where your finger is going to be on there to make it really smooth because that's the last place you want any hot spots whenever you're gripping a handle scale is right there where your index finger is. Now it's time to go ahead and get these hand sanded and there is a ton of hand sanding. What I'm about to show you is only about, let's say about a fifth of the actual hand sanding that I did. But I'm showing you a little bit more. This is a, a bigger section of the video. I'm showing you all of this because I want to show you really how I'm working it. So I start with the contours and I start getting them nice and smooth. And then we start working on the actual steel itself, the spine, and then we'll start working our way back into the contours, then feather it back into the spine. And uh, you do that because you don't want to end up with any hard lines. You'll see on some people's handle scales, they will have waves in them or they'll have solid lines going through them. Either they meant to have really solid lines when they were contouring them or they accidentally focused too much sanding on one section and they created what almost looks like a crease in the wood or the handle scale material. So you want to make sure that you are shifting the whole entire time and you're not focusing so much on one particular spot. You want it to be nice and round, nice and smooth, and smooth transitions. And we went from 320 all the way up to 1000 grit on these. And right here we're just getting that spine all nice and smooth where all the lines are going one direction. That leads to a really good end result whenever you go to buff it. We're going to go ahead and do a green compound on the fine wheel. And I, I like the green compound for this because it's going to give it a good polish. I could have probably used the gray, but I think this green is going to do really well. But I definitely like the way these handle scales turned out. I love the contour of them. I love the way that they're shaped and the way they look when they're all said and done because they almost look like stone whenever you finish buffing these. Whenever you see them in person and you hold them in your hand, it looks like they're made of rock, which is a really cool thing. It's like a polished rock. All right, guys. So let's go ahead, wrap up this daily vlog. That's what we have right there. Love the way that this contour came out. I like the contrast with those orange liners. I think that looks great. 
Got a high polish on all of our pins. And I wanted all of this to contrast from this texture and finish that we have on this. That's the, why, that's the reason why I did this polished instead of acid etching it back. Because I want this and that high polished edge to frame this texture. That's the goal with this. Make, it'll make this pop out. If you don't think it will, just wait until I do it. Y'all are going to go, dang, okay, yeah, it does. But I love the way this came out. This was definitely the hardest handle I've ever shaped. You know, I've had more complicated types of handles material, but this going in and doing this dip here, dip here, 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 on the side, and doing all that contouring and then making it even on both sides was so much work, but this feels so good in the hand. Oh, it's so comfortable. But guys, y'all tell me what y'all think about it. And uh, here, for, before we do that, let's talk about something. So let's recap what we did. We went ahead, got it on the 1x30. Of course, we did that stuff outside uh, because this was insanely, insanely dusty. But we worked on the 1x30s. Hopefully, y'all enjoyed that because I know more of y'all have 1x30s than 2x72s. And that shows you what you can do with something as simple as that machine right there. Uh, that, and then you can get these oscillating spindle sanders from Harbor Freight, just like that 1x30, and they're anywhere between 60 and 100 bucks. So you can do all of that and some hand sanding and get these results if you just take your time. Uh, so we did that, and then we went ahead, hand sanded it a lot, a lot of hand sanding. Then we buffed it with a green compound and that soft wheel, and we get that result. Hopefully y'all like this, and if you did, consider giving this a like. Uh, guys, share this video. Share the videos that I've done in the past that might be your favorite. And if you haven't yet, bottom corner, hit that subscribe button and turn the notification bell so you get notified when we put the edge on this. We slice and dice some stuff with it. Guys, thank y'all for coming by. Thank y'all for checking that beauty out. Y'all have an amazing day. I'll catch you tomorrow.